All right. All right, the Health and Safety Committee meeting is being called to order. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Okay, Councillor Austin. Councillor Austin. Okay. Present. Councilwoman Gowdy. And Chairman and Councilman Nathaniel Martin. Present. Let the record reflect that we have a quorum to, con to conduct this meeting at the present time. Ms. Gowdy's not, in, not here. She's supposed to be on her way. Uh, we reached out to uh, the chief and the chief is not available. He may have got uh, Yes. Wait a, Wait a second, please. Hello. Hello. So, uh, Madam Clerk. Yes. I'm going down the agenda. Okay. And, uh, Gardner's not here, but I, uh, what I was going to say again for the record, we have a special meeting set strictly for the deal with police matters only Thursday, next Thursday at five o'clock. It'll be on Zoom. And uh, we're going to try to get flies out in the next few days so that we can, because uh, there's a lot of issues. There's something that came up today involving the police. So I can't respond to that, but the Chief Scott Gardner can. So he's not available right now, but he's already confirmed for next Thursday. And also, we're going to have Judge Dawson, and hopefully, the mayor will be involved because all this circles around. Uh, those key individuals. The other thing on my agenda is how many stolen vehicles have been recovered in the city dump from other cities. Again, that's a related police matter and someone from the administration would have to respond to that. The next thing on the agenda is safe route grant. And that's uh, a grant we've been getting the last few years to uh, make sure our kids get safely to and from school. And that's police related too. And then we got a, 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 the next thing on the agenda is pro, pro, proposed, excuse me, MOUs or memorandums understanding with the Ohio Attorney General's BCI department. That's a state entity and they investigate shootings and things like that when someone is something let's say bad happens, the state of Ohio Rural Criminal Investigation Department, and they will, uh, he's gonna update on their findings on the last couple of shootings we've had over the last three or four months. Again, that's a police related matter. And pursuant that the pursuits that ended in crashes, Saturday, January 30th, and a couple of, oh, the last couple of months, some uh, hor horrific things would involve with police chase. That is a police matter. But again, Thursday, March 18th, five o'clock, we're gonna spend uh, about an hour or two. We wanna get everybody in. Everybody first will get a chance to ask one question. So everybody gets a chance to get in and if we have enough time, we can go back around again. That's Thursday, March 18th at five o'clock. And we'll, we'll have the Zoom uh, password and the Zoom meeting ID and all that. You can call our office 681-2310, 681-2311 to get that information once it's confirmed. The mayor's getting online right now. Okay. The mayor's online. All right, uh, Mayor Brandon King, how are you? Uh, Mayor Brandon King, how are you? Hello, hello, I'm good. How's everybody tonight? That's good. Okay, we're good to have you. We're not gonna spend a lot of time. I, I want you to, if you can, uh, respond to how many stolen vehicles have been recovered in the city in our new, uh, parking lot or whatever you want to call it. Can you respond to that, please? What, what is the question, Kylie? How many, can you hear me? 
Let me let me cut let me cut my mic up. All right. Can you? Why come you can't hear me? Okay, I can hear you now. I, I didn't okay. have my speaker up. How many cars have we recovered so far in our new parking facility down on Euclid? If, if you can give me a, a a more detailed question as to to what it is you're asking, cars many, that were recovered. Yeah. How many? How, let, let me put it. How many cars do we have? in our new parking facility or, or facility where you tow the cars. So are you asking me for the number of cars that are in there currently? Yes, that, that you know of. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how many cars are in there right now. I do know at one time there was about 30 cars in there. I'm not sure how many are in there at this very moment. Okay, all right. now. Are you familiar, Mayor Brandon King, with the Safe Route grant? Can you say something about that for us? So the Safe Route grants to school, Councilman Martin, I will talk about it. And I hope you as well will chime in. After all, this is something the city has had for countless years. I'm sure you are very familiar with it. And yeah. you've been wanting to talk about it over the years. It is a grant that we've gotten year over year over year. And we have actually walked kids to school in the morning through the safe routes to school. It actually pays for crossing guards and partially the school resource officers. Is that the right title for that, Belinda? School resource officers, yes. So it, it is something that we've had for quite some time, and we, and we look forward to uh, continuing to have this grant. Well, and this year, they're, they're working on infrastructure. They're the ones that did the crosswalks for So us. they're the ones that did the crosswalks for us. And uh, they're doing bike safety, so they're installing bike. Um, yes. Kids can ride their bikes mm -hmm. to school and lock them up there, so they're working on bike safety this year. I hope you can hear, because I, yeah, I almost forgot about that, because every year we've been giving away those bikes, and I'm sure you remember that, Councilman Martin. But it works to support infrastructure so that the kids can safely walk to school. Those mm -hmm. are your crosswalks, yes. your don't walk signs, all that. Those dollars have paid for that type of infrastructure upgrade across the city. Thank you. I, I want to thank you for the last few years, Mayor Brandon King, with the bike thing you have every year at, in, at Shaw High School in the, in the parking area. Uh, are you planning on having that this year of taking into consideration the COVID-19 situation? So we're, we're not sure. There are a lot of things that are up in the air. We're not sure what we'll be able to have, things that we've had in previous years. We would, let me say this, we look forward to opening it back up. I have residents call me about the Keep East Cleveland clean, the kickoff we do in March, that we start cleaning up the city. I've had residents call and talk to me about the parade that they're now used to. Prior to me, that parade had been canceled, right? So there are a number of things we've had over the last couple of years that we, we look forward to having again for the residents of East Cleveland. So it's still up in the air. Thank you. Let the record reflect that Councilwoman Ward 2, Juanita Gowdy is in attendance now put that, make that for the record. No, uh, uh, Belinda, Belinda Kyle, uh, is, is there anything else you want to say about the, the good program, Safe Routes, Safe Routes to School Grant? Anything else you want to say? Because I know you've been involved in that with the mayor. Oh, no, I think the mayor covered it well. We have a great partnership with the school district. Um, and I know the chief and Shannon have been um, working with ODOT and the Safe Routes to School. They visited each one of the buildings to plan for the um, bike safety installation. So now I think the mayor did a good job covering it. Thank you guys. I'm hearing through the grapevine and I cannot confirm that they're phasing, beginning to phase kids back up at the school slowly. Uh, I know one kid that, that uh, related to me goes to the school and she's been on Zoom uh, 
and she gets good grades and she doesn't really have to, she can continue to do that. But starting in March, I've heard that they're beginning to phase kids back into the classroom. So uh, I, that's what I heard. Uh, do you have any knowledge on that, Mayor Brandon King? The kids getting back up to the school? I, I only have the stuff that you've heard from the grapevine. I have seen kids going into the classrooms. So we, we have seen some uh, physical attendance going on. I'm not sure where they're at. Uh, with getting all the kids back in school. So I, I pretty much had the same information you had. Okay. Now, I announced at the beginning of the meeting that March 18th, next Thursday, we're having a special meeting with Chief Gardner, Judge Dawson, and Mayor Brandon King to deal with the Chase situation. Uh police policies on Chase, the, uh, the $10 million grant from the governor for body cams. So if we need to update, we're gonna spend a lot of time. Everybody's basically confirmed, uh, Mayor, you've got to be there. Uh, it's gonna be on Zoom, but it's gonna be next Thursday. So we're working on flyers. So we're gonna try to get the flyers out because we decided we can't deal with all those issues in a, in a health and safety committee meeting. We don't have enough time because we got this another meeting in, a, in an hour, okay? So uh, I'm, going to, um, I'm going to move to uh, propose memorandum of understanding with the Ohio Attorney General's BCI department. Do you want to say anything about that, Mayor Brandon King? No, you can go ahead. Okay, uh, Tim Austin and Juanita Gowdy, before I move to the fire department, you have any questions related to police? Oh yeah, uh, I do. Um, it's been a lot of chases through our city and through other cities and I'm concerned about that because we, we not covered full coverage and um, these are workers pursuits. Um, I am concerned about uh, people getting hurt, our residents getting hurt, anybody can get hurt coming through the city. Uh, one of my um, dear friends had called me on yesterday and she seen the chase also and it's ridiculous and I hope that you can put a stop to this real soon because you is Mayor are, King. Are. You are the mayor of our city and we got Chief Gardner is, is also, um, we don't want them, no more people being hurt. We don't want nobody, no residents or nobody to continue getting hurt through these chases because it's very dangerous. And a lot of people is getting hurt and then a lot of people is getting killed. So I just want you to see if we can work together and solve this problem. Okay, uh, Tim Austin, any questions uh, on the police issues? Uh, I do have a, a comment and a, more, so, uh, more so than a comment. Okay. So, um, what I understand is that there are some concerns with citizen safety and so on and so forth. But after talking to a few other folks about responsibility, and we often reassign the responsibility for, you know, keeping the streets safe from people that have no respect for our city no respect for our citizens and no respect for themselves because they run. The police don't like give them a ticket and say run. These guys come through the city with the intent of, you know, oftentimes getting away with some mischievous or not really want to be responsible for whatever deficiency and or violation they may have, you know, caused in the past or might be in the process of causing when the police pull them over. So we have to make sure that we do a better job at asking those people that run away from the police, either not to do it or you know, give them some tools to help them through those situations, whether it's the ticket from 10 years ago, not having a driver's license, not having proper insurance. Let's set up some, some programs so we can help those guys through that. I know the judge and, and, and other judges have said that, you know, let us help you with your your warrants or the things that prevent you from getting a better job, 
prevent your family from thriving. I think we, I want to work on some programs to help those people that feel like, you know, seeing whatever they have to see tomorrow, if they get stopped today, they won't be able to do that. So uh, again, I don't want to blame the police for having to do the job that if they don't do their job, then we're going to be on them like white on right. But if they do their job, then we're on them like there's a problem with that. So it's, it's a difficult situation. I don't want any of our citizen pedestrians to be hurt by somebody who doesn't care. I don't want our officers to be hurt, injured, or killed trying to do the job that we pay them to do on a regular basis. Most of the general fund dollars go to pay those salaries. So we shouldn't respectfully ask them not to do their job, but we want to enable them to do a job better, be more approachable, and help those people that feel like their violation, whether it's a, a tag that's outdated or whatever, it was something simple like that that caused the last issue that is going to hurt us a little bit. And Mayor, I'd like for you to talk about that if you feel like it. But we want to help those people that pass through our city that need a little help with the legal system so their problems don't grow and or cost one of our citizens their life. Thank you very much for this. Thank you. Uh, again, next Thursday, 5 o'clock, March 18th at 5 o'clock, we're going to deal with the chase, all of that. And uh, Brandon King, are you still there? Brandon King. Brandon King. Brandon. <laughs> Hello. He wants you to say mayor. Hey, may, uh, Councilman Martin, he yes. ran to the restroom. He'll be right back. Okay, well, we, we need uh, him to, to share what's going on with the, I, I think it was $13 million grant for body cams that the governor as of uh, sent us or I read in the paper. And I, I need to know from the mayor, are we submitting uh, to get the, some of that body cam money? And maybe uh, I shared with Chief Gardner some, uh, some uh, real good equipment that I spoke with some other police departments about so that maybe we can update our equipment, body cam equipment, so we can have almost the best state-of-the-art equipment that's out there. So I, I needed the Mayor Brandon King to respond to that. Um, Ms. Kyle, please, thank you. Okay. Councilor Martin, Heather has her hand up. Okay, okay Heather, I can't see it on this. Okay, I'll, you have to look on the side, but I'll, I'll let you know. Heather's got her hand up. Okay, Heather, you can speak, go ahead. Okay, my question is, why do you think that the body cams that we already have are insufficient? Because in the last couple of months, two people were killed mm -hmm. and the issue came up and this is what the big issue was, Heather. And then I'm mm -hmm. saying this objectively, not, not personally, not taking any side, the body cams were turned off. Yep. Okay. But that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with the body well, cam. No, no, <laughs> you, weren't, you weren't there, Heather. We okay. were told that they, fr that they freeze sometimes. I was at the hearing for the first oh. time, thanks to the mayor. Okay. I was at the hearing, and they said that they freeze up sometimes and it don't work, that type of thing. So, so to well, be, the ba I know the battery let me finish, power is an issue. Okay, let me finish. To be objective, okay. if, if the governor it's allocated $13 million for body cams. Let's say that our, our body cams are sufficient. If we can get better ones, I'm suggesting that we go after them. Is that okay? Heather, I'm talking I'm, to you. I'm just, I was just asking because, okay. I mean, we actually have the body cams we have now are actually better than the ones we had before. That was the only reason why I was asking the question. But I mean, if there's money to get to get even better, I certainly wouldn't no, object. <laughs> Come on. Okay, that's the whole point is that in the two situations, and I thank the mayor for allowing me to be a part of it. I heard the discussion and everything centered around the body cam being on and off and malfunctioning and whatever the case may be. So to be objective, I said, well, when I saw in the paper a few days ago that there was 13 million for body cams, I said, well, maybe we can get the best body cams. But so that's why I brought that up 
Well, we're going to discuss that again, Heather, next Thursday, and you can be a part of it. Also, we heard a week ago from Judge Dawson about this mentality with some of our young people of uh, get off getting chased by the police. So we're going to hear both sides. It's going to be objective. It's going to be fair. And we're going to hope that we can come toward some solutions. That's what we're trying to do. I'm not pointing the finger at anyone. We're just trying to get answers. So I got, uh, I saw it in the paper, and then the governor was here three or four days ago with the mayor. So he, and the reason why the body cam situation, the money's there because of the, uh, the people that got shot up in Columbus. So if we can get some of that money, if we can get better body cams, that's the whole focus of that. But I don't know all the details, but, but Gardner and, and the mayor may, may know more about that. So I'm asking the mayor, and I see he's back. I'm asking him, are we putting in for some of that grant money for body cams? Uh, mayor, can you hear me? Mayor Brandon King? Yeah. Councilman, okay. I can hear you uh, yeah. quite well. So yes, we are submitting a grant application to be awarded and get new state-of-the-art up-to-date body cameras as our uh, assistant law director alluded to, we do have new body cams. As you will remember, I think it was late last year, we actually got a grant for some body cameras. So we were able to swap some of the older ones out, right? right. So hopefully this grant will give us enough to uh, purchase body cams across all the platoons in the police and provide, I believe it's four body cams for fire, four body cams for fire. Yeah, okay. we are going after it, absolutely. I, I just got something on my, in front of my computer saying that body cams don't kill guns and people do, but body cams provide uh, surveillance, or, or pictures of what's going on. That's the whole purpose of having the body cams. So no, uh, body cams don't kill people, but body cams protect the police and it shows what's happening on that camera, what took place. That's the whole purpose of the body cam. So it's not a perfect world, but it's some technology that can work for the benefit of the police as well as for the benefit of citizens. So hopefully we get I shared with Chief Gardner uh, a body cam that I spoke with three or four police departments that they say is really good, so we can look at that. And, and if, if the professionals like Chief Gardner and, and the people know this, if they think it's a better quality, it'll work. However, if individuals don't turn them on, it still doesn't do any good. So we're going to work March 18th on what kind of what can we do policy wise when that when that happens, because don't forget, our police officers are trained. The adrenaline is running. They're going after people. They're trained to handle this. So uh, I don't want us to have another situation. And then we, we sit down trying to get to the truth and my adrenaline was running, I forgot to turn the body cam on, or I forgot, well, we, we gotta get past that, or it's gonna be the end of us. So so we, we're open about it, so we're moving objectively on that. Okay, okay, but here's one more thing to consider. Okay, who's speaking? The who's body speaking? cam that, so, this is Heather. Heather? Okay, go ahead. Um, there's, one, there's one more thing to consider. When you talk, the body cam system we currently have is tied to a company and it's tied to a program. So if you change, by my concern is that when we got the new body cam system that we have now, mm -hmm. we no longer had access to the old system. Okay. So if you, if, if people had not asked for body cam footage um, prior to the change, you couldn't get it after. So, I, cause not too long ago we had an attorney do a public records request, and he wanted Heather, body cam Heather, footage from something that happened Heather, in Heather, May. Heather, Heather, yeah. Heather, 
Yeah, that, that that's yeah. fine. But let's not let's not get off of the subject here. And, right. and it seems like okay. we're away from it. So we are putting in for the grant for Thank new you. cameras. We right. will sort all the rest of that out at a later date. Th thank you, Heather. And, and let me let me throw this caveat and we can move on. The body cam that, that I gave uh, to Chief Gardner, it has the technology where he can see what's going on from his office or in his car. I mean, it's, it's really an upgrade. I mean, you can see what's going on when, when the officer is pursuing a, a, a criminal situation. It, it, you you got to see it uh, if you can't get a copy of it. But it's, uh, I don't have it in front of me, but it's supposed to be some of the best stuff out there. So, but we'll get to that next Thursday. Again, uh, Chief Gardner will be there. Mayor Brandon King will be there. And, and Dawson, Chief, uh, Mayor, I mean, the uh, uh, Judge Dawson will be there. That's next Thursday. And we're only going to talk about this and see if we can reach some solutions. So we'll, we're going to move on now. Uh, well, we, we're moving past that now, Gotti. Uh, uh, Mayor, is uh, the new fire chief, is, is he acting fire chief or is he the real new fire chief now? So, Councilman, he is the acting fire chief right now? Is he available? I, we got Salika down here, but I know he's gone. So, I'm not sure if he's on the call or not. I'd have to look to see if he's on the call. I said he's acting. The police chief is permanent, right? Police chief is permanent. The fire chief is acting, yes. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I haven't met, I think I've seen the, the, the new fire chief, but I, I haven't seen him since he's, he's acting. I know he said he was at a couple of meetings, but we never got around to him. Okay, uh, let's let's move on and, and, and thank you for being here. Uh, are there any questions related to fire that anyone wants to ask? Fire-related questions. Now we're on the fire part. Anyone? Okay. I have a question. My name yes. is Diamond Belmonte. Is the mayor still with us? Yeah. yeah, the mayor's still there. He's there. Okay, I just have a question regarding the protocol. Now, you said that, now, we all know my brother is, I'm Diamond Belmonte. My brother is um, Vincent Belmonte. Now, the car that he was, you know, chased by the police and it caught fire. Now, what is the response team? Like, how fast is your guys' response team for the fires? Because don't I have also have two questions in one. Doesn't don't they send ambulance and uh, fire soon as? Uh, Brandy, you want to respond? Soon as there's a fire in place. Yes. Her, her question. Brandon, I, I'm right here, Councilman. Okay. I'm not sure I understood the question, but let me let me tell you what I do know. We have arguably the best fire EMS in the state. They do 7,000 runs a year. Our right. response rate from inception of call, 911, to arrival on the scene is three minutes, right? Okay. okay. Now, I also have one more question regarding that, now that you've answered, is you said it's three minutes, right? Three minutes is the average. Okay, that's the average. Now. From the body cam footage that, that has been shown in previous, like, regarding my brother's case, now, the EMS didn't arrive in three minutes. Actually, your police officers never called the fire department or EMS until after that three minutes had already gone past. So, in, in my question is, there, with what good is it to have a good fire department and a good EMS if we don't have the proper procedures being followed in order to make sure our citizens are okay in a properly manner. Well, your, your question is very valid, Ms. Belmonte. We're going to deal with this Thursday. We're going to spend two hours on it. No, that was, regarding, that was regarding the fire because the car right. that he oh, was driving, the fire, fire, am I wrong? Well, he's not, Ms. Belmonte, but the I fire guy is not. Them, 
He's not here. I don't know if the mayor can answer it. Can you answer that question, Mayor? I absolutely can. So okay. as, as many of, of the elected officials, and you yourself, Councilman Martin, should right. remember this. Here's what, here's what happens. When I say the best in the state, 7,000 runs a year, average time three minutes from call to being present on the scene. Now, the beauty of that is there's a system that records all of this. So if we were to actually go back and look at the log in the system, it'll show you when the call came in and it'll show you when they showed up on scene. And I'm willing to bet they were there within that three to five minute window. So if, if, okay, if, if I just that needs to be done, I, I, other than that, I'm not sure what happened on that particular day. I'm not sure when they received the call. That, that's the only thing I can speak of is that it's logged. So when 911 rings and the call comes in, they're there in three minutes. And all of this is logged. So my question is, well, my question, I, and then this is my last question for you. So that means that when they were in pursuit of the car, because it was an actual car chase first, and then it, it, it turned into a, uh, an actual foot chase, not only did the car catch on fire, but the car hit multiple things. We know that. So what my thing is, once somebody ex exited the car, not one officer said, well, I guess some like cam footages and all the EMSs and everything. Um, one of the officers actually stated that they wanted to take my brother to the hospital. And one of your officers actually stated, leave him there. So do you have anything to say about that? So, so let me, let me apologize. I don't know what happened in that particular case. And on the scene, I could only assume that there's an investigation going on into it. And I would say, let's just leave that alone. Let the investigation play out and take its course. So I, I can't speak. So how is so is Officer McDonald back on the force fully? What what are we, where are we at now? She wanted to know if Officer McDonald is back on the force, and I don't think he's ever been off the force. So uh, answer her, please. He has, he has he has never been off the force. He has been disciplined several times. He has lost his uh, stripes, so to speak. Okay, young lady, any more questions? Um, no, that's it, Mayor King. I'll be seeing you on Thank Thursday. You. All that, right. That's great. That's I'd love to see you. We can talk some more. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move to gun buyback program. Uh, uh, Mr. Martin. Yes, uh, uh, Mr. Austin, go ahead. Mr. Irby. Mr. Oh, yeah, Calvin, go, go ahead, Calvin. Okay, uh, this question is for the, for the mayor if he would like to answer it. Uh, what are your policies on officers leaving the city in a pursuit chase? And what is the distance that the city is allowing them to pursue a chase? I'd like to thank you for that question. And I'd like to leave you with a question. The answer to your question is better served by the police chief or the brass. My question to leave you with, kind sir, if it was your child, mother, sister, daughter, wife, when would you want them to stop chasing? Answering the mayor's you question, question. To answer the mayor's question with most respect, your officers, Cleveland's officers, my son is deceased. None of the officers were on their job or duty the night my son was murdered because I call it a murder because we have not found the person who murdered my son and left him in the street. If officers do their job, my son will be here today. So my question still is, why are they by Hopkins Airport? Why are they in Ashtabula? When does the city says, hey, we're not letting you go that far and other cities should be called and recognized? Your job, let's see how you would answer it. Yeah. So Again, uh, kind sir, I would leave those questions to the brass, to the police brass to answer those questions. You know, I've actually sent the police uh, to, is ooh, I believe it was 
North Carolina to pick up uh, uh, someone who's wanted on a warrant for murder. So again, the question becomes at, at what at what cost? I mean, if, if if it was a family member of yours who a suspect was being chased, when would you want him to give it up? And we don't have to back and forth on that. We don't have to back and forth on that. We can let the police brass answer your question and give you a better hard numbers as to when and where and all of those things that you're looking for. So thank you. Okay, any more any more questions from the public? Yes. Okay, Omaze. Uh, Come on over here so they can hear you, Omaze. We have 10 more minutes, Mr. We got 10 minutes, we got we want five minutes and then uh, let me know so I can wrap it up, Tracy. Okay. Because right, you All have right. to get ready for the next meeting. Yeah. Go ahead, Omaze, speak over here. Uh, Take Number one, to answer the questions in reference to chasing, there must be a specific reason that they're chasing a person. For example, if, if robbery or a death or, or what have a homicide or something of that nature. But as far as uh, uh, chasing someone because they ran a stop sign and caused multiple uh, uh, accident and people injured and then and, and council can pass legislation that you are not to go outside of the city limits and you can c contact other municipalities and saying that you're in pursuit or what have you there are multiple cities does not allow you to chase through their cities because you put other people's lives in jeopardy and so to answer the question the, uh, the norms has been that you do not chase outside of the city. You must contact other cities unless there is a, a dying emergency that you are pursuing. Just because a person ran a stop sign or whatever, even if, even if they have a warrant, if you have seen the car or whatever the case may be and ran the, the license plate, you are, and if that person doesn't stop, he took out flying through the city, then that we have had accidents in the city. And uh, uh, because of the lights, you have removed the lights. There's nothing but a freeway on Euclid Avenue, even with the police. And I'll say that per, uh, public, publicly on this on Zoom. They fly up and down the street just like the residents does. Can I make a comment before the meeting is over? Yeah, this is the last comment. Uh, and I'm going to conclude with uh, just an update on our next meeting. So Austin, go ahead, please. Okay, yeah, um, I, I do appreciate the um, emotion that is being presented to make the city better. And I ask that we all have a little bit more compassion and or understanding as the families seek um, not only justice, but a measure of assurance and closure that their loved ones were not lost in, in, in vain. So as we get a little closer to, you know, doing some of the um, legislating that we have to keep the human effect in, in, in place and be as mindful and respectful as, as possible. And, and those of us that are indeed in, in pain, we have to um, consider the person that we are asking for a, a measure of closure and, and or resolve because we, we all go through with you and, and I want to send my sincere uh, gratitude and, and understanding and or condolences as you continue to rebuild your lives in, in this new normal. So uh, I too suffer loss and, and ask your understanding because we are all human and trying to live the best life as we, that we can and, and grow through this process. So. Uh, I ask that we all be a little bit more considerate to the to those of us that are in pain. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Okay. Martin, you have one more person with their hand up. They've been sitting there for a while, a Joseph Butts. Okay, Mr. Butts, you got the last question and we got to wrap up for the next meeting. But before Mr. Butts, before you say what you need to say, again, next Thursday, March 18th at five o'clock on Zoom, 216-681-2310-2311. Call the clerks to get the Zoom number. We're gonna spend two hours next Thursday at five o'clock on police chase policy 
and all that to get behind the talk and see if we can move towards some solutions. Mr. Butts, go ahead, please. Joseph Butts. Tracy, yes, Mr. Butts, go ahead. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Speak All up, right. sir. Go ahead. My, uh, it's not really a question. It's more of a statement of uh, policy. You guys said you guys are going to cover a lot of things for the police issues that have been happening in East Cleveland. Yes. And you're going to address them because coming meeting, correct? Right. Oh, Thursday, March 18th at 5 o'clock. All right. So... Okay. If, if an officer himself has already violated policy multiple times, why is he still allowed to carry a gun and a badge? Well, that's a great question, Mr. Butts. We're gonna deal with that with the police chief and the mayor next Thursday. So get your questions ready. We're gonna spend, we're gonna stay there to everybody. We're gonna get every, try to get everybody in. That's why I'm giving the two hours. So I can't answer that, but there's also, an answer for your question. And we're gonna do it that other gentlemen. Another gentleman was mentioning that the police were outside of their jurisdiction. That is law. They are allowed to do that. However, the, 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 the explanation that was given about a murder warrant, um, I'm sure North Carolina spent extra money getting an officer to come pick up that, in, that individual, not on-duty officer doing a high-speed chase up 77 North all the way to Cleveland. Well, uh you may, you may have a valid point there, Joe Butts, but we'll deal, we're going to deal with all of this Thursday, okay? I knew we couldn't get it in today because we got a, a special council meeting at 630, but we're going to allocate. Don't forget, not only are we going to have Chief Gardner, Scott Gardner, we're going to have Judge Dawson, we're going to have Mayor Brandon King. They are keys to all of this in terms of policy, implementation, et cetera, and uh, the body cam situation, the $13 million that the governor has allocated a grant to, to get better equipment, whatever we can do to make things better. Thursday is going to be D-Day. And Brother Butts, I want to thank you for your question and, and be with us next Thursday. I got to wrap up now. Time. Thank I you. Appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Austin, before I conclude, anything you want to say? And I'm gonna have God anything you want to say before I, I adjourn this meeting. Um, I would like to say that. Um, Can we hear her? Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. I would like to say in closing that the officers should never, ever take off the body by um, camera at all during any duty. And I really want to know how long do the cameras last? Do they last all day, or how is they charged? You know, because all this time that I have seen the video that he had it on. And so when it actually, the young man actually got shot, the body camera all of a sudden, not on, you know. So I have a problem with that. And I really want to ask these questions on the next meeting because a lot of people is upset. And I, I'm really upset too, because He's, um, McDonald is back to work. Like it's nothing has actually been done. Like it's normal. So I really want him to be suspended. Fired. And I really want him to be fired and off duty. I really do. Because he is the one that talked off the body camera. What time is that? And I really uh, want him to be dealt with. Can I get something? Yeah. Okay, uh, Mr. Austin, anything you want to say? Um, I just want to thank everybody for, for caring enough. Um, like Councilor Smith would always say, committee meetings are very important. This is where you can actually talk about it and have a great conversation about the things that are important to the city's survival and the, the renaissance of the city, the needs of the citizens, and as well as the, the things that are of concern to us as a council. So I respect the opinions of those that were provided tonight. Looking forward to the next meeting, Councilor Martin. Thank you. Thank you. And the last comment, and I'll close, is Justin Anderson. Go ahead, Mr. Anderson. Yeah, I wanted to know when is uh, when has McDonald been presented in front of the Civil Service Commission for his promotion or promotion when he became a sergeant, and any other um, officer? They are supposed to go through the Civil Service Commission, and also, I'll be really quick. 
the officer Foti, who just we saw stomping on the head of an African American male today, um, like we were his slaves. Um, I want to know when is he going in front of the Civil Service Commission? Because as of my knowledge, I don't think we have one because Belinda Cow is too busy doing everything else to where she been jacked up and ain't held a meeting for the Civil Service Commission. And now the state wants to know where the meeting minutes and all that stuff because Belinda Cow been, uh, been too busy running around City Hall um, doing everything else. And we need a Civil Service Commission. If we don't have a commission, we don't have a city. So. That's a safety concern, and I need to know from the uh, chair, Nate Martin, what is going on with the Civil Service Commission? Uh, Mayor Brandon King, are you there? Brandon King? Well, uh, I, the mayor is off right now. Yeah, so. you're, running, you're at that time limit. Mr. Okay. Mayor. All right, let me close saying that oh, and I, I, didn't, I didn't say nothing about the gun buyback program. You get everyone, you get $100 to return the gun in to our police department, no questions asked. You get $150 if you turn in a gun. We're trying to get these guns, there's too many guns out there off the street, okay? We've allocated money for that. So if, if you have a relative and they got a gun and you don't think they need the gun, bring it up here and get, and, and, and get the gift, the $100 gift card, uh, please. We're, do, we're dealing with that. In closing, next Thursday, March 18th at five o'clock, Mayor Brandon King, Judge William Dawson, Chief Scott Gardner, and all of it, we're gonna deal with these issues. And, and uh, Joe and all the other concerned people, let's hope we can get to some solutions, period, and some policies that need to be implemented, okay? Uh, because of the next meeting, I'm going to ask I'm going to call this meeting adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank I just everyone. posted the agenda showing on the screen right now for yeah. next week for you, Counselor. Right. It, it is up on the website already. Right. The meeting ID for those for the meeting next Thursday is 881-9058-5895. Again, the meeting ID is 881-9058-5895. The meeting passcode is 135845. The meeting passcode is 135845. Next Thursday, March 18th at five o'clock. Get the news out and uh, hopefully we'll have some flyers in the next couple of days if you wanna come and get some flyers because we, we're looking for a whole bunch of people to be a part of this. To chase, you just heard what Justin Anderson said about an incident. I haven't seen it, but I, I got a call on it. So, Madam Clerk, let's adjourn this meeting. This All meeting right, is adjourned. Sir, Thank you. Yes. What, this, what was the uh, eight, uh, eight, eight number was? 881 9058 That's the meeting ID and the meeting passcode for the meeting next Thursday is one three five eight four five five o'clock okay and all the players are supposed to be there brandon king william dawson scott gardner you should get some answers here. this meeting's adjourned thank you <laughs>